Earthlings, how you doing? How you been? Happy March. Welcome to another episode of Guys We Hugged. It's the anti <laughs> bad girl shaming podcast. Mm. I'm Corinne Fisher. I'm Christina Hutchinson. Make sure you're following us on social media, guys. That's where all the th- most important things in the world are happening. And yes. it's the only place in life that has meaning. I'm at Philanthropy Gal on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. I'm at Christina Hutch. And together we are at Guys We Fucked Without the You in Fucked on all those things. Make sure to follow and make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's youtube.com uh, slash guys. We fucked without the you and fucked. Uh, watch our special that just celebrated a one day. year anniversary. Our special day. We have the dumb bitch woo woo hour. We have uh, a lot of stuff. And I also feel like we all are, are said fuck within the first 60 seconds. 60 seconds because <laughs> we're at a minute and 12. Right. So uh, exactly. Because we just, close. we just hit it now. Mm. And um, it will continue oh, to be a problem. Um, if you want to send us an email. The email address to do that is sorry about last night show at gmail.com. Oh, and also, too, um, a way to get instant advice from us is at the end, last Wednesday, usually of every month, we do a live episode of Guys We Fucked on YouTube only. So that's another reason to subscribe to our YouTube channel because we have call in episodes on our YouTube channel exclusively. And we figured out, and by we, I mean Mike, figured out a way to filter the vocal, the, the audio from the call into the mic so that it sounds better. Got Got a different board. Not for nothing. <laughs> the audio quality is better because I did get a couple messages from some tech nerd people that are like, excuse me, but I noticed that you're holding the phone up to the microphone and you don't have to do that. And I was like, yeah, thank you. We you're knew right. we didn't have to do it. We just kept missing a part every week. Yeah. yeah. So thank you. Anyway, today's subject line caught my boyfriend sexting his ex. Cute. All right. Hey, Corinne and Christina, love you both and appreciate your wise words. Hoping you can help me with this. The other night, I had a gut feeling to look at my boyfriend's texts. I never, I've never done this with him after being together for two years now. I've always trusted him, but for some reason, I had a feeling, and boy, was I right. I saw sexed exchanges with a woman who, after reading through these messages, realized is an ex of his. These texts were insanely explicit, mainly on her side, but he played into it pretty heavily and sent her a dick pic back in October. Nice. She sends him videos of her fucking some dude. Ooh, fun. He called her a cum queen. Cute. Which was previously something he'd call me as a sexy nickname, but now that's ruined. Yeah, that's dumb. You can't call two girls cum queens. You got, if you well, can't me, know about yeah, it. Yeah, you got to hide that shit. Like, be, men are so bad at cheating. Uh, call me, uh, called her cum queen, and then that nickname's ruined. It seems to go back as far as we've been dating. These messages were periodic, maybe once every few months, but they seem to get more and more explicit. Because he got more and more bored with you. Mm, <laughs> it does seem like that's what happened. <laughs> Life sucks. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> and it doesn't get better. <laughs> this man moved to where I moved back in July after we were long distance for about nine months. We just barely moved in together in November. Yet the whole time he was doing this with her. He swears it was just pornographic outlet. He didn't even really picture the person on the other side, except when she sent him videos of fucking her fucking do. But the day I had that gut feeling, I had been doing an overnight clinical for nursing school and he tried to sext her while I was away. She didn't respond in time and they didn't exchange anything that night, but the fact that just in October, they were knee deep in sexting, fucking sick. The worst is if I hadn't caught him, he'd still be doing it. He blocked her, deleted her number, and says, I can look at his phone whenever. Mm, Mm. That's super healthy. Bad pattern. But I'm still so hurt. It wasn't physical to my knowledge, but I don't trust him right now, so why would I believe that? He swears he loves me, only wants to be with me. Nothing is missing in our relationship, so why? Just for porn? I mean, possibly, yeah. That's what porn is for, and I'm it's, more... Girl, be, be serious with yourself. It's way more fun to sex with an actual other person than you know than to watch porn. Yeah. Like, this is the part where just, like, women, like, just, just level down. Sh- like, come on. Get, get on the level. Be serious of, yeah. with yourself. You have it in you to, to understand what's happening. That's what porn is for, and I'm more than okay with him watching it. He says he's sorry, and it's the biggest mistake he's ever made, and I believe oh, he's sorry, so but corny. why couldn't he have thought about me 
in the moments because he wasn't. He was horny. Yeah. And you yeah. weren't there. Yeah. And the blood went to his dick instead That's of his heart. Yep. It makes me feel so disheartened because I really thought he was so perfect. No one's perfect. I hate the idea of starting over because of this quote, if this perfect man would do this to me, I think anyone would. We are so compatible and truly he treats me amazing. I'm used to uh, used to very contentious relationships and he's always been so patient, supportive and kind. I mean, that's that's a big thing. We have so much fun together and I've never been more in love with someone. I just can't stop thinking about it. Is it stupid to forgive someone for sexting their ex? P.S. I know this isn't very support girls of me, but holy shit, this woman is hideous. <laughs> Rare. Wouldn't you rather be sexting a... And I'll go. Men always cheat down. Yeah. And we've been saying this for months. Even though I don't know that I qualify this as cheating. But um, from what I this know. This is cheating. From what I know about their relationship, she's already, she's also really toxic. So I don't feel bad saying that. She knew about me the whole time too. So fuck her anyway. But also but fuck so him. so did he because right. he was dating you. She has no obligation it's towards yeah, you. Not she has zero obligation. Yeah. She doesn't have to be like women helping women at all. And she wasn't. And that's fine. Um, would it be better if she were hotter than me? Gag. I mean, no, the fact that you're you're in you're in, in love with somebody that you feel so compatible with and this is a I'd be curious like why uh, this is what I would want to figure out like why were you doing it and I would also look at like our sex life was our sex life dwindling or suffer, suffering in any way because if he it was, was doing I'd it the pissed. whole time though right right but I don't know how their sex life is you say you're compatible so I assume your sex life was good um, uh, that's the problem you for me I, I don't like that he was doing it the whole time yeah that that's the only problem I have because then there's dishonesty for the entire length of the relationship yeah. if it was something that just it's happened shady. for during a period period of time like a year in or something that to me a lot more manageable with all the things that you're saying about him I don't necessarily think that you should break up with him again I, I mean it depends like you, you know I would, I don't I know would break I up would. with him yeah I think I would too but that's also I, I just don't I don't care enough about being in a relationship to put up with this. Yeah. But that's a decision only you can make for you. And I think that I'm very far to like whatever. I don't know if it would be right or left, but I'm, I'm very far on the edge. Um, so most people I don't think would agree with my my stance for disposing of people. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is grounds for a breakup. Though, I, I, I think I, oh, this is I mean, cheating. If this, were, if this were me and I discovered this, I would be like, okay, this isn't what I thought it was. And that's very disappointing. But we're going to end things now so I can start here healing and I'm going to erase you from my mind and pretend you never existed. But out of all the things that we hear on this show, I think this is something that if you made the decision that you wanted to keep stay in the relationship, yeah. I actually don't think it's like, I don't think you would be a dumb bitch to stay in this relationship. I think it is certainly manageable. My issue is, a spe you know, I, I'm guessing you're, 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 you're writing us so soon after that, that the emotions are still high. Yeah. The thing is though, if you are going to stay in the relationship, you have to make the conscious uh, effort and to decision forgive. to forgive him and yeah. then actually do it because yeah. staying in the relationship and then like, you know, holding him, you know, on a string the whole time is that's going to be Awful a fucking nightmare for both of you. So you have to like, if you're going to stay in this, you have to like start healing and start making this work quickly. That doesn't mean like, oh, he's completely eradicated immediately. Immediately, he should have, you know, he does need to earn your trust back. Um, and I'm and he should be he knows that. Yeah. And but, he, you should even give that responsibility to him if you want to continue together and say, hey, tell me how you can earn my trust back. Because right now I can't really see it, but I don't know that I want to end things. So what are your ideas? Make him fucking do the work. He yeah. did the work sending all his dick pics. He can use his brain to figure out how to mend your relationship. It's not going to work. It's done. You'll never, <laughs> you'll never fix it. You'll never fix it. I, I don't know. I disagree. He I usually like always think it's a breakup. I actually think that you can if you made it. I also don't know how old you are, yeah. but I think that you can. I, I do think that you can if you make the conscious decision to forgive him you can because it just depends like how much something like uh, sexuality with someone else bothers you right because it's pure it is it's pure porn pornographic so if they weren't exchanging anything about like care for one another i do think it is actually i actually know someone who got past something like this oh wow um, but you know yeah it's definitely doable it's definitely doable but man, what a, what a, what a, he can't, can't call your, he can't call you come queen ever again. Yeah. That sucks. That sounds like, that's it, a bummer. And it also sounds like, oh, the other areas of your relationship, like he's delivering in a way that you really like. And so he lines up with all of it, except, you know, the whole him 
sexed in his ex for the last three years. Yeah. Don't you hate that when that happens? Well, best of luck and let us know what you do. I'm curious. I'm curious the path that you take. Yeah. And come see us live, guys. Vancouver, Canada. I'm at House of Comedy March 16th through the 18th. Boston, Massachusetts. I'm doing Laugh Boston April 14th and 15th. Edmonton, Canada. I know I'm, I'm supposed to say the province, province and not Canada, but you know what I mean. Comic Strip April 20th through the 22nd. Detroit, Michigan. House of Comedy April 28th and 29th. And then Philadelphia. If you're in Philly, May 11th, 12th, or 13th, I am recording my debut stand-up comedy album at Helium, one of my favorite clubs. And I'm going to get another time tattoo at that same tattoo shop that I got a Wawa tattoo at. I don't, I have an idea of what it's going to be, but I'll unveil it that weekend. Um, yay. And then, uh, I have a Patreon that you can sign up for, for just $5 a month. You get a, an episode of my solo podcast, the voices in our heads uh, each month. And then you get four up to four, um, zoom group therapy and quotes because I'm not a licensed therapist. And I have one tonight at seven. They're usually, usually Mondays, uh, Monday nights, East coast time. Uh, but then I pick a weekday or a weekend once a month. So sign up for that at patreon.com slash Christina Hutchinson. If that floats your boat. All right. And then Dublin, Ireland, uh, Monday, April 3rd, I'm playing at Whelan's. Uh, you can get tickets at Whelan's live.com. You can go to CorinneFisher.com and to and, and go to the live section. You can go to the uh, link tree link in my Instagram bio, uh, which is at Philanthropy Gal. There's so many ways to get tickets. It's also on Ticketmaster Ireland. So that'll be a really fun time. One show only. No shows are being added. No other dates are being added. That's if you live in Ireland and you want to see me, that's the only time, uh, probably for many years, uh, if we're being honest, that I will be there. Uh, so that is the time to do that. And then without a country, specifically the uh, episode that is available now on YouTube. The most recent episode uh, is so important to me and I would love for you guys to go take a listen. Um, I have an amazing drag queen guest on it. Her name is Izzy Uncut. Uh, If you guys are keeping up with the news, there's a ton of bans and bills being introduced because conservatives are now targeting drag. They're trying Mm -hmm. to make it sex work, which it it just is not. Um, uh, And so uh, we had a really deep dive and did a main story on that. Uh, The episode is called Drag Queens Are the Mascot of Capitalism. It's episode 162 of Without a Country. I highly recommend watching it on the on the YouTube channel. Yeah, you can with it, which is just at Without a Country. Um, Subscribe while you're there uh, because there's so many visuals uh, and there's a lot of funny moments. um, And I I just thought it was important to have an actual drag performer come on and speak um, to what's happening, Um, because even though I have been to, you know, 50 plus drag shows in my lifetime. Nothing compares with actually living in the moment. And it's also extra fun when just someone is in drag to have a conversation with them. But I think that's really important. Uh, And thanks so much for everyone for supporting that show. So many of you listen and I I really, really love love it. And I hope that it's helping you to become a more critical thinker. Um, But of course, if you just want to listen to the audio, it's also on Luminary and Spotify and Apple Podcasts and all the places where you listen to podcasts. Um, Yeah, that's that for my plugs for myself. Um, All right. For this, uh, I don't know if you had something that you want to go over. I... uh... So I saw this uh, tweet from Neil Strauss, um, the author. I mean, the game, I guess, is his most famous uh, book before I went to bed last night. And it said, do you want to be liked or do you want to be effective? You can't have both. And I've been Mm. thinking about that all night because, God, I mean, that's me in a nutshell. Uh, Obviously, you know, it's effective, not liked. Um, It is. I I just think for like a larger like it's a larger conversation that's especially important to women. And I see it so often. Um, You know, we talk about like ability and women on this show a lot and in general as a society but it it really just like it was like i I just wanted to put it out into the air as kind of like a psa or a reminder that part of the reason uh women are like held accountable for being likable is because people know how effective we would be if we weren't concerned with being likable Mm -hmm. and women do it to each other all the time. Every time I'm on a podcast, I mean, honestly, you know, it's, well, it depends what we're talking about, but like just as many women 
as men will make comments on, you know, not, me not being likable. It's like, I wasn't, I wasn't trying to be likable. I was trying to be effective and I was trying to uh, convey what I came to the show to convey. My profession is not professional, likable person. Most comedians, I would actually argue, and especially male comedians, are actually some of the most unlikable people on the planet. But how come especially it's acceptable? Especially when you get to know them. Yeah. Well, but how come it's acceptable, you know, for men to be un- unlikable, but then women, you know, and, and I would argue if you find women comedians less funny, it's because they have in their brain, they're also having to think about being likable, being hot, being young. And guess what? That's all energy that's taken away from being Being funny funny. and it's and also being likable is not funny Mm -hmm. i've never met a likable person and been like wow they're hilarious they should try stand up it's very very rare yeah i you know silly people are likable Uh, uh, hilarious people very very rarely likable um and i mean i think a perfect is is example i mean louis ck's latest special he plays madison square garden he comes out in the fucking most disgusting outfit i've ever seen someone perform form live in like an old ruddy sweater a dollar t-shirt jeans from god knows what the fuck year he's uh, you know he's unapologetic about the crimes of his past he's you know like he makes a joke about you know oh thanks so much for supporting me i'm sure there was at least one person um who in your life who you couldn't tell what you were going to do tonight you know <laughs> and funny. that was even a step down because i mean like <laughs> in his uh in his last special yeah he was even less you know less attempt to be likable or apologetic and listen i don't i, I don't you know whatever my feelings on louis care separate i was like all right well you know you, you don't have to not apologize that much you still did fucking take your dick out in front of a bunch of people who didn't ask for it so let's not get too cocky there lou um but uh you know, uh, it just reminded me uh, about, and I thought it was a perfect example of likability. Yeah. And so like, you know, men and, and other women in your life will continually try to make you feel bad or make you feel like you need to adjust to be likable. Uh, but that's them taking away your power. And so do whatever you want, obviously. But I mean, it's a, it's a trick and it's a trap. And, um, uh, and, and a great example of going the opposite direction for a woman, I think is, you know, my favorite example is Amanda Seals makes no, doesn't even want to be likable. And I think to me, that's what makes her so likable. Mm. I fucking love Amanda Seals. And I mean, obviously it has, it, you know, her, she's huge. Her career is incredible. Uh, her following extensive, you know, so it, it it is possible to have the career that you want um, without worrying about being likable. He also goes on in the post to um, say, the more effective you are in the world, the less liked you will be. What are you willing to stand up for? Uh, to answer questions you know, that you might have, number one, you can still be likable. That's not the same thing as being liked. Um, so, I mean, I know I hmm. use it a little bit interchangeably. Uh I don't know exactly what he's talking about on that one. Cause I'm like, I kind of do, but I'm like, I think being likable and being liked, like I would actually say it's harder to be likable than to, be liked like i consider myself to be a person who is liked but like less likable i don't know that's a bit of semantics there yeah uh number two just because someone is famous doesn't mean they are inspiring change i (laughs) absolutely fucking loved that one really hit home for me um and then number three this is important many who used to be effective many people who used to be effective and received criticism for it have opted uh in their dotage to be liked and safe instead that to me is a lot of women. I see a lot of women take, uh, you know, and and it's because we are pummeled with feedback we didn't ask for. And so I'm not even criticizing you if you are someone who has adjusted to be, um, I'm going to say likable. I I don't agree with that. Number one, one Uh, to be more likable, uh, to make your life easier. It is extremely difficult to go through life as an an unlikable person. Uh, But, you know, th- I I think every now and then check in your in in with yourself. What did you set out to do? What is what is your motivation? What are you trying to achieve with the work that you're doing or the person that you are existing as? And 
see what spa- like places you adjusted to make yourself more likable there f- for, um, you know, watering down the message or the purpose of your life. Because I bet you will find many aspects that you did that. And I even check in with myself. You know, sometimes I'll be like wanting to post an, an- a, you know, a fucking Instagram story about animals and how I think you're a terrible fucking person if you're buying a puppy mill dog. And I really do. And I know that I really try to see the, uh, the sides to everything, but that's just one that I'm like, I, I just can't see the other side to that. I just, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think that was a fucking bad move and your dogs rule still, but you suck. Um, and I, every time I want to post something like that, I go, Oh, but lots of people are going to have puppy mill dogs and that's going to make them feel bad. And I go, yes. well, maybe they should feel, <laughs> maybe, and maybe they, they already did feel bad, feel bad. And, they, and they got over it. You know? yeah. yeah. So, um, so that's kind of like my thoughts on that. And then number four, uh, I may be, you, oh, that's just him him criticizing his own grammar. So we don't need to go, go, go into that. But I just, I thought that was like a, a really great point and something I certainly think about a lot, but I think like applying uh, effectiveness uh, or, you know, thinking about how effective you are in your life versus how likable you are very very important and especially online like if you're a person who lives online in any way uh both men and women will criticize you in a way that you will want so badly to make yourself more likable or perhaps you will maybe you won't um and in reality they are just trying to take away how effective you are being Mm -hmm. and especially as far as the patriarchy is concerned and again overused word but does have meaning in this in this context uh that's what men are doing men know exactly what they're doing men are not stupid and they love that women have started this narrative that all men are just stupid they don't know what men know exactly what they're fucking doing and part of what they're doing is making you feel old and unlikable Mm. and less worthy therefore making you less effective so that you're more easily uh easily controlled make i'm i'm sure of this so do with that information what you will happy friday uh yeah i have nothing to add uh, our guest this week, she is a she's in her second appearance on the podcast. Um, the first time she came on was about a year ago uh, with her first book, By Yourself, The Fucking Lilies. She's the author of the forthcoming book, Glow in the Fucking Dark. It should is, be available now as you're listening to it, to, for, to, at least for pre-order. But mm-hmm. uh, yes, yeah, available everywhere, she said. Uh, uh, yes, um, By Yourself, The Fucking Lilies was her first book. The second book, Glow in the Fucking Dark. Make sure you go get it and while you're at it, welcome to the show, Tara Schuster. Hello, everyone. We are here with author Tara Schuster. Um, your first book, By Yourself, The Motherfucking Lilies. And then you your second book, Glow in the Motherfucking Dark. I added the mother part. Um, welcome to the show again. We're so happy to have you. Oh, I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you. I like that you chose a difficult route, which we also did too, which was putting fuck in the title of everything oh, you do. It really adds an extra headache to everything. can't say it on television. Yeah. You can't write it out. The people don't want to promote it. Yeah. Everyone's like, Ugh, wait, what are you, a whore who wrote a book? Like, Please, can we actually talk about this? Because I just realized that yeah, nobody else feels my pain. They're yeah, like, I just it makes me just want to be. Like, yeah, it makes me just want to write a book just called "Cunt." Yeah, <laughs> I'm see sure. how far I can go with it. I feel like that has to exist. Has yeah. to. Someone has some how to do that. But like, yeah, it's it's crazy. Like, it's just such a I don't know. It's like a, such a babyish society. I think like you can't curse. I mean, with the actual, there's like literal horrors going on in the world, and fuck is the the battle that we decided to fight. I'm like, Stupid. the earth is burning. Mm-hmm. Ukraine, we're in a full scale war. Yeah. I can't say fuck in yeah. the title of a book. Like, this is the most innocent problem. Yeah. Like, yeah. are you kidding? And I know yeah. enough kids whose parents say fuck and they don't say it. So it's like, uh, it's possible. Yeah. You know, you can say fuck in front of your kids and they can understand that they can't say it. Just like you could drink a beer in front of your kid and you, they can understand that they don't drink it yet. Yeah. You know? That said, next book, not going to have fuck, fuck, fuck in the fuck, title. Fuck, fuck, fuck. No, I'm actually I surprised that you didn't learn your lesson from the first one. <laughs> the, the publisher, I'm going to call them out right now. They oh. wanted, I didn't want fuck in the title. It was a huge. Oh, oh interesting. Oh, yeah. It was a huge, huge thing because I was like, oh. oh, speaking, going on TV, any of that stuff. But Mark Manson did it. <laughs> think- Mark Manson's book. <laughs> yeah. It's very popular to have fucking uh, a title these days. Yeah, people. But then you know, there's like the camp. There's still the camp, the prude camps of people who are like, why can't ladies talk like ladies? Yeah. 
It's like, shut up. Just I mean, shut up. Eat a fart. I sir. like it though. Like mm-hmm. I like the title and I was ultimate, like it was um, a line from my proposal was yeah. glow in the fucking dark. So it wasn't like they came up with it and they were like, you have to use this. It was right. like, it I wasn't like they took something that you said regular and then they're like, Let, what, what if we added <laughs> fuck to it, Tara? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But I don't know. So this book is about healing your soul, which I'm all about. Oh, and we were talking earlier before we started recording that uh, the um, hashtag and journey <laughs> to working on yourself when you have like a m- big misalignment and you like kind of been lying to yourself your whole life about like a big thing, which my, a lot of people have. Like, I don't know. I would say anybody who has like childhood trauma or some fucked up shit that happened to them when they, when they were kids, like as a coping mechanism, your child brain does you solid by kind of lying to yourself. But boy, unlocking those lies, man, makes you want to die. It makes you want to fucking die. Um, And I wish that we gave people more of a heads up on that because it's so worth the trip to do it and the world will benefit because you will benefit and everyone around you will. But, um, But it feels like death. I mean, I'll just jump right into it. There's a whole chapter in this book about my tr- my trouble with suicidal ideation, which I've oh. had my whole life. Mm-hmm. And basically what I'm trying to say is it's not totally irrational. Right. There's some of us who have been through things so terrible that that like little kid self, they just want to end the pain. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, yeah. like I have, um, I was super abandoned and neglected as a kid and that little five-year-old who... Mm-hmm just hasn't had a minute to grow up. Like that's definitely what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. Her pain is so unrelenting that when she's activated, I want to die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to to differentiate yourself. And then once you figure it out, like the mechanics of like a traumatic thing that happens to any person, whether it's childhood or or adulthood, because traumatic things will happen the day you die. But it's like, okay, like understanding when that feeling comes up, you go, oh wait, there's distance between me and this feeling. This isn't an actual reality. This is me being in a place where I can handle the feeling yes and yes. so i could process it yes the difference between being totally overwhelmed blended like i can't see past this and oh i'm like mid 30s tara who like understands more doesn't mm-hmm. need to i use this line in the book if it's hysterical it's historical mm-hmm. then i'm able to see like oh man this problem with my boyfriend has nothing to do with my boyfriend it has 100% to do with my dad. Wait, Oops. wait. You know, like... Oopsie poopsie. Most right. cliche thing in the world, but until you can see it, you actually can't act differently. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, because you're overwhelmed and you just can't even see it. Yeah, it feels like you're in a hamster wheel of hell yes. until you figure out, oh, this exactly. is old shit. Exactly. Copy that. And so what, like, for you, what was the... Uh, like impetus from for writing this book after completing by yourself the fucking lilies. So what's like what's the difference? What have you learned between these books? Yeah. So by yourself the fucking lilies was basically I realized I was miserable. Like 10 out of 10 miserable with my life. I figured it out. It was my 25th birthday. I drunk dialed my therapist threatening to kill myself. Mm. And I realized, Cute. I know. Oh my God, I'm like, I believe I remember you saying gal. that. Yeah, in, in, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, original episode. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it was a lovely little. Incident. Do you remember what you said? To the therapist, yeah, on the a voicemail. Vaguely, it was like something like, "I'm, I'm suffering. I hate this. I hate yeah, my skin. Yeah, yeah. I hate. I hate. I hate. Yeah. I hate." It was. I mean, I would walk through the streets like West Eleventh Street. I'm like, I'm, I'm ugly. No one cares about me. No one loves me. I'm disgusting. I'll never succeed it, again. Yeah, tormenting. Tormenting, and I was 25, and yeah. I thought my life was close to ending. Yeah, and that next morning, I realized, oh, if I don't save my life, no one's coming to save you. Nobody, yeah. dude. That's There's a wild nobody. thing to realize. And so that morning, I realized, okay, I need to reparent myself. I grew up neglected, psychological abuse, all that stuff. Cool, cool, cool. That's not my responsibility. Yeah, I, it, like sure, I could blame my parents up and down. It just doesn't do anything. It's not going to help me. Right. And so the journey of buy yourself the fucking lilies is just learning practical tools to gain stability Mm -hmm. because stability seemed like an insane proposition that I could never have. Right. You know, and so it took me five years to figure that out. It was actually, it was just a Google doc Mm -hmm. where I wrote down, 
you know, all the questions I had about how do you take care of yourself? Like, what are values? What are principles? Yeah, no one teaches you that shit. No, oh, no some, one, some people have parents like, like, you have parents that were like pretty instructional and gave you like yeah. really helpful life tools. I mean, values and principles are also like, you know, I think they give suggestions and then I ultimately picked. I also have also, even since I was a little kid, had like been really good at critical thinking. Mm-hmm. And I didn't realize until, I don't know, like last year, Year, that most people, even as adults, are not really able to critically think. And this is not me like calling everyone stupid. This is just a fact. Oh, it's yeah. like they have no tolerance for it. Or well, you're, well you're like it's a, also just like not a concept that many people's brains even get to. I mm. didn't have that. So yeah. I was asleep at the wheel yeah. until 25. Yeah, right. My life was just happening to me. I didn't understand I had any agency or choice or could change things right. until that morning where I was like, actually it has to change or I won't be alive anymore. Yep. Yeah. And so that's kind of the the whole thing with Lily's was finding small, like big picture stuff scares me. Like if you were like, <laughs> feel joy. I'd be like, cool. What are steps one through five? Like that makes no sense to me. <laughs> yeah. You know, like that's actually why I don't like most self help because mm. it's like, let go. Cool. Of course. Okay. <laughs> like, How? Who doesn't want to let go? Yeah. You know? Um, and so by the end of by yourself, the bucking lilies, I felt stable, content. I was Ooh, like, Oh that. my, Oh my God. I'm not like on an emotional roller coaster every day. Mm-hmm. And then the pandemic hit. Nice. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right then. And Comedy Central, where I'd worked one third of my life. Third, fuck. Where people, In a high up position. Toward, with some good yes, motherfucking shows. Yes, with some cool shows where like, that was my whole identity. Like, I would be introduced, Tara Schuster, Comedy Central. Like, mm-hmm. it was my married last name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and it was, but it was this magic trick. It was like, look at me, I'm talking to David Spade and Jordan Peele. Don't look You're over like, guys, here. Guys, I'm doing really great, yeah. okay? <laughs> yeah. Doing so fucking great. I'm so good, and I'm not a weirdo. <laughs> <Been there. laughs> yeah. Like, my job is awesome. I, I like that you added, and I'm not a weirdo, because I was like, well, in comedy, being a weirdo is actually a bonus. It's a plot. to my friends, to like, to my, like, to people I'm, like, who together. I wanted to prove. Oh, you still had, like, regular schmegular friends about, at the bottom of all that is proving that you deserve to be loved right 100 so fucked and yeah that, and that like oh my childhood wasn't like odd quote unquote like because i had a better job than you yeah i had right status right i'm overcoming you. my fucking yeah, yeah. and <laughs> so then they laid my ass off yeah with no ceremony there's like bye they didn't wow. give you a reason yeah. or they basically got rid of i mean i don't want to they got rid of a lot of people yeah no, they, i've cleaned yeah. house a couple times yeah, yeah it, it yeah. wasn't personal all my heroes got let go at the same time yeah. too yeah that but, helps a little bit with it oh, i guess sort of yeah. but I, your ego it's like a death of the ego where you're like oh i can't derive my happiness from these egotistical um yes. feelings i'm i had no idea who i was if somebody else wasn't defining me and if it wasn't in relation to status which i thought was higher than everybody's else interesting mm-hmm. so that led to we thought a lot of like <laughs> <laughs> i mean i feel like a lot of people think this way they think like yeah. oh my identity is completely tied to this external thing that makes me good what happened was I totally all the darkest traumas that I had not really addressed during the time I was writing lilies came surging to the surface. Yeah. And instead of pausing for one goddamn minute to reflect, I was like, cool, cool, cool. I need meaning. I need a meaningful life. What can I do? And I Googled, how can I help in the 2020 election? Because that was, mm-hmm. if anyone recalls, a big I deal. I remember that a little bit. <laughs> yeah. mm. Big, big deal. First, essentially first Google search result is you can help by registering voters in Arizona. I was like, cool, grabbed my Vitamix, grabbed a <laughs> bag of books I would never crack open, head to Arizona. That so screams, I'm, I'm okay, <laughs> yeah. I'm so fine. You literally just went to Arizona. I'm like, fuck this, I'm going to Flagstaff, Arizona. I'm gonna, I'm gonna help, I'm gonna help save democracy. <laughs> like I'm on it, yeah, like another. You're, you're repurposing the energy yes. that's, dwell, that's 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 uh, boiling up inside of you. Yes, yeah, yeah. to find meaning yeah. in something that is outside of myself right. and on the road to Flagstaff. I had the worst Breakdown. dissociative episode of my whole life. So where like I, you know, I'm driving, I can see my hands on the steering wheel. Mm-hmm. They do not appear to be connected to my body. Jesus. I, I'm feeling full body sick. I cannot stop speeding. I am starting mm, to get yeah. 
I'm like in this weird, numb, terrified space. Yeah. And I realized I have to pull over. I, I cannot overwhelm my way through life. I cannot hustle my way. I cannot productive my way through my life. Something has to change. I pulled over. It was late at night because, yes, I was being a safe driver <laughs> during this whole thing. And the stars were out. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if it's because LA, we basically can never see the stars or that these were particularly nice stars. Mm -hmm. I looked up and I'm just like, fuck, Mm -hmm. these stars come together because of pressure and nuclear reactions and all these horrible things that you think would make something like burst. Mm -hmm. But instead they they glow. They actually glow. They actually like light the way for anybody. And I just wondered. They glow in the fucking dark, I think they do glow in the fucking dark, actually. That's exactly what fucking stars do. Where we're going here. Ladies and gentlemen. Shine on your crazy goddamn (laughs) diamonds. Exactly. And the only other thing was, as I, you know, as I was there, I was like, and you know what else? When people talk about stars... They're not. They're never like stars have moral failings. They right. didn't get their to do list right, done. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. Like no one. They just saw, exist. They just exist. There's mm-hmm. no opinion about them. Uh, right. Yeah. Other than whoa, what a miracle. Yeah. <laughs> like, sure. You know. So, yeah, I totally got into thinking about big picture things when I, I had a bunch of disassoci- dissociative moments where you're like, oh, oh, that's scary. That's not good. But then you, yeah, there you think about like the solar system or like I would cut open an orange and just stare at it. I'm like, this is fucking perfect and beautiful and it was once a seed right i will be fine and i I couldn't um trick myself out of that because we are literally made of stars like not in a cute like oh i wrote this on a mug yeah like, the atoms and molecules yeah yeah, yeah. like the like iron a, not like blood. a moby gwen stefani oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Aww, laughs> what a great throwback <laughs> yeah so moby and gwen. I, if that's in me mm-hmm. then i can't outthink myself of thinking i'm not good enough because Dude, yeah, there are literal miracle star in me, and if I can just hang on to this and believe what is already true, I bet I'm going to have a different outcome. Mm-hmm. And that was the whole question of this book: is Do I have an essential self? Do I have a soul? Uh, is my soul so fucked up that mm-hmm. I cannot hear it? Can I trust myself so in muted. any kind of way? You literally were questioning whether or not you have a soul because I know yes. a few comedians who don't. But they yes. should though. They should question if I yeah. questioned if I had a soul. Yes. When I and the bigger question was, mm-hmm. I thought if I did, it was really really bad. Right. That was the bigger mm-hmm. thing. That's the shit, man. With 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 when if you know if you grow up with a, somebody in your life, like an adult figure in your life, like treating you like even the neglect and stuff, a kid just goes, "I guess it's me." I thought, and I would, then you, yeah, I thought I was. If you go in your thirties with that, you're like, "Fuck." Well, totally. I mean, I think you know, I, I I do believe that there are people with bad souls, but I think the very thought that you are questioning whether or not you have a bad soul kind of is the answer that you don't, because yeah. someone who had a bad soul would never even think to ask that question it's like the narcissist thing if you're Mm -hmm. asking if you're a narcissist you're probably not right 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 right, right. so what can can, like medically uh, can you do you know like why disassociative episodes happen do you know the medical explanation i don't know like the total i know um like i'm gonna butcher it to some extent Mm -hmm. but basically it's my coping mechanism so i don't have to be in reality Mm -hmm. so it takes me away from the present which kind of works. Oh, so it's like it was useful. common when people are it's being abused and, abused and, and yes. stuff. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. PTSD. Yeah. Um, just to like zoom out quick. I'm not here. I'm not here. I'm not here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when, and when you realize you've been doing that, you're like, Oh, that means I have to not do that. That really sucks. But when then it's like, it, basically you're preventing yourself from feeling like the flood of emotions. Yeah, mm-hmm. And uh, exactly. the best, the, I, I, I recently was in Winnipeg, Canada, shout out. And uh, I did the Nordic spa, I did the cold plunge and cold plunge is actually really good for people with PTSD. PTSD because it like your nervous system what it does for Wim Hof wrote a whole fucking book about how the cold plunge will help you with your anxiety your depression all this shit and um but it feels like when you finally don't disassociate it feels like you're 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 in freezing cold temperatures outside naked and about to step in ice water and you're like okay oh my god okay and it's wild it's wild how it's, visceral it is it's completely and it's so much better now what I know so I thought doing all this work was going to kill me overwhelm me mm. I would 
I was on a good enough plateau. Like I had money and savings. Like I could get another corporate job if I wanted to, you know, and I thought if I really dig deeper, I, this is going to be too overwhelming. I'm not going to be able to do it. I've worked so hard already. I wrote a fucking book on this. Like how mm-hmm. could there possibly be more to do? And, <sighs> and now yeah. on the other side, having dealt with, I no longer have dissociative episodes knock on Thank God, yeah. all of the wood of the world. Mm-hmm. I'm like, whoa, this is an easier way to live. <laughs> I like, would say, yeah. <laughs> like this is yeah. 10 times easier than constantly not knowing my feelings, not dealing with them, pushing them down, not owning them. Oh, and wow. Not hating yourself for like just dis- for, for preventing you from kn- knowing how you oh, felt. Oh, yeah. And You're like you have the therapists are always like, you have to really give your child self a pat on the back because you were doing yourself a solid by pretending. I'm like, OK, I get it. But it sucks. <laughs> it, and it sounds so lame. Like when like the major thing I learned through this process was I can't hate myself into health. I can't reject mm-hmm. myself into self one. acceptance. Mm-hmm. I actually am going to have to learn how to accept me. Mm-hmm. And it's so cheesy. And who would want to do that? Because that sounds so lame. But now I actually know it, like you can't push away your anxiety. You cannot push away your depression. All those parts of you you hate. Yeah. There's no way to soothe them or come to peace with them by pushing them away. It's also, I'm realizing as I live my life and also with working with Corinne, frankly, that it's just not normal to hate yourself. Right. But it, but but the thing is, it is if we're going by numbers. Right. Well, societally, like what's how should you I didn't you know be? that. So that's my problem is like <laughs> my problem is like I, I'm just walking around for years being like, why is everyone acting like this? And then I'm like, oh, it's because everyone hates themselves. Oh, and cool. then people act, you know, uh, uh, certainly are very um, responsive to me. <laughs> right. But I'm like, I feel like I'm not like I'm not trying to start shit with people, but people don't like when you feel good and then you say it and it's not like I don't like get depressed or I'm not sad or I don't have plenty of my own struggles in my life they just seem to be like different ones (laughs) and I so half the time I'm just like walking through life being like I nothing that anyone says feels meaningful to me (laughs) I mean, <laughs> quite frankly, I mean, every now and then, like Alanis Morissette can nails it a lot. Gems, but I mean, I, I feel like there should be, more, you know, I feel like then when you have to reach to like an Alanis Morissette album, that there should be someone maybe in your real life <laughs> right. saying something that resonates Fingers with crossed. you. But I don't know. So a lot of times I'll just go back and listen to something I said. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and I, honestly, very and helpful. I'm like, yeah, good advice, me. Thanks, <laughs> good job. I go, wow, Stand I really it. nailed it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I, I, I don't know, but yeah, a lot, a lot of people hate themselves, and it, it just makes everyone else's life unpleasant. Oh yeah, my, that's my, that's why I would like to eradicate it. Right. Well, that's why, like, you can <laughs> literally make the world a better place yeah. if you stop hating yourself. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It, that's honestly one of the best things you can do for the, not for the environment physically, but like. <laughs> For, for humanity, let's just say that, not the environment. It it's, was so cold this winter because everyone stopped hating themselves. I know. <laughs> wow, we finally got snow. Uh, but yeah, it's like the best thing you could do for the world is to not hate yourself, for That's sure. The number, yes. it's like I want to scream it from yeah. every rooftop because we all talk about, with thinking about global things, like how am I going to fix like these big, big issues, which yeah. yeah, we really do need to fix the big, big issues. But how about you could start literally right now today yeah. by not hating yourself because you obviously act out in ways with your whole community, yeah. and you know? People be projecting. Oh my God. And everything, it feels like every interaction, someone's just projecting. I'm like, wow, it's hard for me to almost differentiate an actual fight where someone's really mad and they're mm-hmm. they're saying how they right. feel or are they just fucking mad at their dad or whatever, totally. like their ex or something. You know, yeah. people don't think about if you're not dealing with your own trauma, I bet you all your friends and family are dealing with it. Yeah. Because you, yep. you mm-hmm. have no idea, you're not in control of it, and you're acting in ways that suck. That are embarrassing, too. Yes. And then when you, like, kill yourself, you'll, you look back and you're like, oops, oops. oh, I did so, all so that sorry. in front of people. So people, <laughs> they have so much agency. That's the other mm-hmm. thing I just want to scream is, like, you have so much power. Sure. The whole world wants you to think you don't have power. Yes. Yeah. The There's system, industries based off exactly, of it. Exactly. Yeah. But you do. Absolutely. And you could change everything if you could change yourself, and you know you can change yourself. Like, yeah. I now know how much change I'm capable of. So even when uh, two weeks ago I was like super depressed, acting shitty, 
caught myself was like, mm, yeah. oh, I can change this. I'm said my apologies, you know, like I own, I, that was me. I was acting out of place because I was reacting to this whole other thing. I'm so sorry. And let me work on myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's once you think you have a good soul, which now I do think. Nice. You just, it, I'm not that defensive. I'm just right. like, yeah, whatever. My soul's not, ne my whole personality and being is never at stake. So right. I can take right. feedback. Self worth. My yeah. self worth is never on the line. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. It is exhausting. It's weird. It's like that you have to walk this fine line, though, too, of working on yourself, diving into all the parts you don't want to look at, shining a light on them, but also like, making sure to take time out of your day and week to not think about yourself oh, is yeah. so goddamn exhausting. So I'm just like, I don't want to think about how I function in the world and how I relate to everybody for one second. To like, That's why I smoked weed, but I'm like, I also don't want to disassociate, like, or, you know, kind of numb out, but I'm like, I need to just stare at a wall for a little bit. That's why I got into rollerblading and weightlifting. Well, we need that. We yeah. need fun things that have no, like, um, they're just goal. They're simply just fun. fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I get a lot from readers. Oh my God, like, I'm off my journaling practice. I feel so terrible. Like, I haven't woken up on time. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, the you're just giving point. yourself reasons to shit on yourself. Uh, yeah, the whole point of self-care is to take care of yourself. It's actually even... Not to stress you out more. And right, it's not right. that serious. Right. Yeah. Cool. No one's going to... Like, the teacher's not going to be like, <laughs> yeah. where's your homework? Yeah. Yeah. And the fact You forget, that, though, sometimes. You're like, right? wait, I could just do what I want? And, okay. That's and, my favorite. Like, yeah. I'm like, you know, because, like, there's a lot of this talk about, like, you know, adulting and, like, how people don't like it. I'm like... And that's also to me is like, a, I'm like, I love being an adult, wait, doing whatever you want every day. And of course, there's difficult things, right? Um, you know, and paying bills and, you know, balancing your check. That's not that stuff's not fun. But I think like the payoff that you get doing whatever you want all the time is so awesome. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> great. It's great. <laughs> oh, you couldn't pay me to be any younger or like to ever yeah. go back. Because now, yeah, oh my God, I'm like, oh, I know know myself mm -hmm. I love myself and I can say that without cringing and I'm in charge of me yeah, yeah. cool yeah. <laughs> yeah it's really nice you know I yeah. do think though like it's so funny because I see like Corinne has always been in a place where she's like always known she was so, so that was never in question and then so like I, and I, like I've been on this thing where I'm like okay I'm here oh I'm fucked up okay got it and there's just years of like crying and screaming and then going oh okay I'm an adult now I can have like big girl pants on and do things that I don't necessarily want to do but they're I got to do them but then I worry that I am headed for this mental place of like realizing that most people don't work on themselves and they're all full of shit you gotta like uh, somehow develop a sense of humor about that oh because wait, it can totally. i imagine it can be very distressing well i'm trying to talk about suicidal ideation in a way that's funny yeah because i'm like there's just enough tears already sure yeah. you know i have merch that says congrats on not killing yourself but i'm like i really mean it i it's hard life is hard that merch yeah. that's like one of the truer statements i've heard <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. you know yeah, a lot of people resonate with it i'm like oh fuck it's dark out there y'all <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, more people are suicidal than I thought. It's true, and nobody talks about it. Yeah. And then people say stuff like, oh, you'd have to be so selfish to kill yourself, or like, oh, they weren't thinking about your family. And then I'm want to scream. Yeah, that makes me want to kill myself even more. You're being born is non consensual, and yeah. no one can fight me on it. I mean, that's part of the reason I don't want to have kids. I'm like, mm -hmm. why would I do that to somebody? <laughs> that, I had never thought of it from that. I angle. think about Unless you had a dream where all there, the someone time. was knocking on your womb, like, mommy, I want to come to the world. Excuse me. Wait, what? Like, what if you had a dream where, like, your future kid? Was like, oh, if I had, can you I, have me? I don't believe too much in in actual dreams. I mean, the mm. dream I had last night was like wild, so it has and it's not no no basis in reality. Yeah. It's like representative of other things, you know. It's all a metaphor. Yeah, but yeah, I. Uh, you know, so that's why, you know, people are like, oh, you have to do all this for your parents. I'm like, listen, and I love my parents very much. I mean, my dad's dead. So the, that love is, you know, gone. Um, it's still there. <laughs> it but died with it's him. It's not as active. You know, it doesn't right. have to be as active anymore. Uh, but <laughs> he, uh, yeah, it's, I don't I don't know. It just feels like no one who who asked for this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here, so I'm going to do the best with what cool. I have. But it's not like, oh, my God, life is the greatest gift I've ever been given. And we got it. Right. So now what? Right. Yeah. That's the whole thing that I'm after. Like, you know, I'm not, I didn't go to like theological school. I'm not a psychiatrist, not a psychologist, whatever. My only question is like, how the fuck do I make meaning out of this thing? Because yeah. this thing is happening. Exactly. So is yeah. there a way for me to enjoy it? 
Like yeah, a, there's any amount. and there is like that. Yes. And that's that motivation is a damn jetpack. Yes, back. yes, and like, there's got to be a better feeling than that's this one. <laughs> what I hope that both of my books give is just like here are a few ways this could be more enjoyable. You could have more sure. agency. I don't know that they'll work for you. I have no idea. Yeah. This is just what like I've observed. Um, because we need meaning. Otherwise, why not just go jump? Like, yeah. if you don't have sure. something to like tether yeah. you. I mean, that's that's the you know man's search for meaning. That's I mean, the, that's yeah. the whole, I didn't want to quote it, but like it's the whole absolutely, thing. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you can create meaning. Yes, and you can yes. find new meaning, and your meaning evolves all the time. Yeah, but feeling yeah, feeling like stuff's meaningless is whew, dark. That's a dark. That's a dark day, and you just order Chinese food all day and smoke weed and watch reruns of shit. <laughs> So because this is a relationship and dating podcast, uh, are you were you in a relationship while writing this book? At points. Interesting. Can you fun. talk a little bit about that and maybe yeah. how that um, just because I think especially for women, um, so much of our societal value does unfortunately come from whether or not we are coupled. I highly disagree. We've been talking a lot lately. Um, I highly disagree. I've yet to have an instance where I felt like I actually had more value having a, a, a partner, um, a romantic partner. Um so, yeah, can you speak to that yeah. and maybe how it affected your writing? Absolutely. I mean, a big reason I fell so apart without the Comedy Central job mm. was I was uncoupled, uh, uncoupled. I did not have kids. I had mm. none of these other markers of what I thought it meant to be like a successful woman. Mm -hmm. And it, so then I was like, so really, what am I? Because all I have is me. Yeah. But, well, then what did you find? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And what was the. So the answer was, wow, I have me. <laughs> and I'm pretty awesome. <laughs> For and I'm sure. with me and I'm with the universe. A lot of this is actually finding like um, a bigger belonging that has nothing to do with these like incidental incidents. I call it Lady God. Um, I'm like aligned with fucking stars and Lady God and the universe. And that makes me like a much bigger thing than just this like teensy little me who needs to have a bridal shower, basically. Right, right. But there's a thing in the book where I was dating a guy who he he told me he was like a magnate from a you know, had like a transatlantic accent. And oh, wow. I'm going to take care of you, sweetie. You Whoa. know, he, he's kind of like, but literally. Stick with me, Toots. Yeah, I got you. He's like, you're the best. Yeah. Like, where did you meet this person? Are you person? my new daddy? I mean, boyfriend? Yes. No, I, I was like, okay. Hinge. Wow. Hinge. Okay. I was like. He, I'm angle you towards that. Yeah. I was like, he's rich. He's Ooh, obsessed, rich too. He's obsessed with me. All he wants to do is oh my have kids with me, which I don't know that I want. But like, he wants that for me. I was so flattered. There mm. is something so uh, yeah. I don't even know the word, but yeah, about having Sus someone being a no, I, no positive about oh. uh, like enticing about someone being obsessed with you. I love I, it. If, my therapist goes, "You like that?" I go, "Fuck yeah, absolutely." <laughs> I was like, "More people need to like that." <laughs> I was obsessed with but how it, much he was obsessed. Yeah. with yeah, me. but there's, yeah, then sometimes if it starts out too heavy too soon, you're like, okay, this is well, all of suspicious. Sudden, yeah. He's needing $1,200 to tow his <gasps> oh, car. Oh, he ain't from rich. The oh, he lies. <laughs> oh, he that's, a that's, the, that's a Tindler he, Swindler. Yeah. He was something, that's the hinge cringe. I call him the real Gatsby IRL. I e. do not know entirely what his deal was, but it was so bad. The and whiplash. he knew to, to, to lure you in. Exactly. He wanted to news. Yeah, those exactly. motherfuckers know what a person wants to hear. So I took a they year off dating. I was just like, peace After out. this guy. After this guy, I was like, peace out. How many times immediately, though? Like, once he asked you for money, yeah, you like, were like, I'm done? No. You didn't. Okay. So well, I just it, kept it's going. It's intoxicating, the obsession. Wait, can, can we can we break this down a little yes. bit? Because I'm curious, because I always think it's very helpful to to, uh, to hear other people's accounts of them falling into this thing, because it's hard. You can't see the forest through the trees. Yeah. But when you hear the story, you're like, oh, th those are the flags. Those are the flags. Yes. Those are the Okay. So, like, there how, were, you know, in what other ways, like, did he shower you with gifts? Gifts. God, this food. is like Textbook. Meals. Like what level? But so okay. What so level of gift and what level of yeah? Meal? Like we'd go to um, all time a restaurant in Los Feliz, and he would Is that order. A fancy one? It's like what a Los Feliz person. It's like uh, low key fancy. Okay, okay. do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But he'd order everything on the menu. Mm -hmm. Like one of we'll have like basically one of everything. This is te there's like so many guys that and, do this shit. And he the biggest thing that I was just ig willfully ignoring was these half truths all the time. Like what? Like we'd be somewhere and he'd tell someone, "I bought my house." 
but I knew he rented or he'd tell uh, and you wouldn't bring it up. No, I wouldn't say anything mm-hmm. like always these just little yeah, like, mm-hmm. I'm like or, or he said he went to high school in Denmark and then a friend asked him, oh, like, what was the name of the school? He's like, I don't I don't seem to recall. <laughs> Oh, what? Wow. You're like, you don't seem to I don't to recall. recall. Toots. Yeah, exactly. Now get back at that kitchen. And then, so I'd hear these willfully ignore it because I wanted to be, I wanted to be wanted and I did not care about right. anything else. You were like, um, la, 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 la. Totally, yeah. <laughs> totally. And yeah. so at the end of it, I just felt so, just like, how did I do this to myself yet again? Because yes, mm. he was, yes, he sucked. The, the answer is simple though, really, right? The answer is he 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 dangled something yeah. in front of you that felt good. Yeah, and I and wanted you kind it. Of yeah, you, want to be, you believe what you want to believe. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. so I then took a year off and I only recently have emerged into dating again, but with a matchmaker. Ooh, that's I'm very like, interesting. I want to get into that, but I just want to yeah. tie, yeah, yeah, yeah. A tie the swindler up the, guy. I got more questions. Yeah, just because because, okay, so where was he getting that money from? Other women? Other women, right? So I actually think he was wealthy, but he was on an allowance. And that uh, he would run through. <laughs> that's some fuck boy shit if I ever heard uh, Yeah, I think he... And oh my, my mom gives me 20K a like, month. That's so funny. I went to his family's house. And I checked rich. out. Okay. I, you know, looked at the Wikipedia page. That checked okay. out. But at the end of the month, we couldn't go to dinner or he needed money. That's hilarious. What, what was the most amount that he asked you for? I think it was 1200 It was wow. 1200 or 1400 For what for, and for what? Did for he... towing a car. <laughs> yeah, because for me, the minute someone asks me for money in a romantic relationship, yeah. I usually will give it to them one time, lose total respect for them and then walk <laughs> yeah. away. Well, I would yeah. never ask a friend. First off, yeah. like, I mean, I would have to be in such dire shape. I've had friends ask me for money in, in ways where it didn't, it didn't bother me and they all paid me back right away. I have I had hadn't been in that position, yeah. mm-hmm. and I would myself in a romantic thing that had been less than six months. I would die before I asked a guy for oh, money. That's oh, that's yeah, would yeah, that's nuts. Die. Yeah. When you when you broke it off with him, how did he take it? It was so weird. He was like, really? He was <laughs> weird. <laughs> he was like sending me flowers and these weird. Oh, it was the beginning of the month. Well, <laughs> <laughs> must have been. <laughs> he gave me this is the ultimate weird thing that I write about. He the whole time refused to read my first book, Lilies. Okay, and I really wanted him to. Wait, I, so it just didn't get around to it. He actually ref- he, he refused. He said no because he I will said, not stand for this. He said I want to respect your boundaries. That's to which I said you were asking him to read the book. Yeah, I make my own boundaries. Right. I am asking you to do this. No, no, I, I just uh, I want to. I couldn't your possibly boundary. read. I possibly. One day, I'm. He's about to throw a party for no reason, like this Hollywood <laughs> That's Hills. So gassy. That's some Richie Rich com- shit. I mean, literally, like Mr. Monopoly was there. There was a man with a monocle, like oh my oh, God. Was, like oh, from, okay. a, from a former life of his. Oh wow, I, I was insane. And he's like, I, I have a gift, and it would mean so much to me if you would take it. I'm like, okay. I open this thing. It's my book. <laughs> Except he's written all over stop it, it stop and it, put in stop passages it. from Russian literature okay. over the pages and has like glued um, leaves. Cara, <laughs> I hate this guy. He's going to kill you. I'm yeah, so glad he, you left. He, it was This guy's a murderer. It was at that moment where I was like, um... This is really weird. And he like had the look in his eye of like, you love it, babe? He said it, um, it was something like, it would mean so much to me. If you would take this, take like, my wow. own book that you like that you, defaced. Yeah. Wow. And that was the end. Oh and, boy. Yeah. And that whole time I had felt so anxious about him. Yeah. I actually started seeing a psychiatrist because I was like, I've done all this work. Is it me? Yeah. yeah. Why am I 10 out of 10 anxious every morning when I wake up? Why am I startled? And like, you know, my yeah. heart is racing. Cause this and, person is not a safe option. Well, so she said, I don't think you're anxious. I think you're furious. Oh. And I was like, oh you were allowing yourself my to like- God, I wasn't allowing myself. A lot of us think we're anxious, but really if we asked what's underneath of it, mm-hmm. it was that I didn't know how to express anger. I had really? no practice. Mm-hmm. So pushing something down 
feels like anxiety. It, right. it feels bad yes, that it way. Does. That's mm-hmm. a good point. And so once I could kind of identify that, and that's a huge part of this book is actually learning how to label your emotions. Ugh, right. Because it actually pretty quickly changes your whole life. You're like, oh, wait, I'm not anxious. I'm furious. So I can break up with this right, guy. Right, because it leads mm-hmm. you to a solution. Exactly. Almost immediately. Immediately. Yeah. And that's actually when I broke up with him was like, whoa, he is, I'm justifiably so mad. Right. So it is now time to break up with you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he sent me flowers. He um actually very recently sent me Ew. an overnight. Ew. Like from like the Hollywood Hills to like <laughs> to like West Hollywood <laughs> of all these pictures of me. Uh- and oh my god! And oh, like something Tara. like I this is love an episode you. of you, you move, girl. Yeah, <laughs> I know, yeah. I know. But and what, I know he's not as hot as Penn Badgley. No, he is not. Yeah. No one hot. is. So and it's an impossibility. I'd so. probably accept Penn Badgley. Actually, yeah, I'd probably like, be like, well, be a little whatever. But well, there was that. What was that fucking movie on Netflix where the guy's like eating body parts? Penn Badgley could literally eat <laughs> half of my <laughs> leg, <laughs> and I'd be like, I'll waddle around. Yeah, for yeah. You. he was hungry. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real sickness. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So he's gone. He's but out he of still my life. Pokes you a little. Well, you know when a guy just kind of fishes. Yeah, You're like so oh, desperate. Like five to six months later, I had this happen recently with someone else. Like five to six. I was listening to NPR and I thought of you. Yeah, cool. it's like. A- yeah, like, like, is that hey. always crazy though? Because every now and then I do hear something that makes me think of someone, and I will reach out, but I'm not trying to fuck them. It depends how. Well, it you're ended. a girl reaching out to a guy or to a girl, so it's like it's different. I feel like when a guy does that, oh, and there's if you a motive. Ended I was like, amicably, fuck, I gotta stop doing that. No, like if it ended, like oh, we're we're not gonna burn each other's houses down. Right, 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 right. right. But if it ended in a I've weird never dated anyone who owns a home. To us, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Neither did, have I because he was renting. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Um, so now you have a matchmaker. Yes. That's a very interesting. Can you talk I'm about that very process? fascinated by yes. that. I think that's a great idea. Yes. Because it weeds out swindlers. Well, I was like, okay, Hinge has not worked. I have been on it for at least a decade at this a point. De- wow. Yeah. I didn't even know it was an app for a decade. Yeah. I've been there. I've wow. been in these trenches. You cut the, you cut the ribbon. <laughs> yeah. It's like the yeah. opening ceremony. <laughs> you have the ringing bell. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You were the first profile uh, on Hinge. First one. <laughs> that actually would have been dope. That's yeah. Hilarious. And there probably were good people like way back when, but right. now I'm just like at the bottom of the gutter with like the same people I've seen before again and again oh, and again. Oh, shit. And I'm like, yeah. why are we all here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also what's my personal responsibility, which is why I took the year off to like figure out my shit. For sure. I was responsible for this too. Yeah. And I came out of it being like, I'm also addicted to hinge. I'm addicted to people liking me. And then I say nothing to them and delete the app. Yeah, mm. that is fun. And I, I also, <laughs> fun. I also was watching. I think it was Jay Shetty, and I, I don't necessarily know these really famous internet type people. I don't necessarily know how I feel about them, but I'll take a little from everyone. And he was talking about how we have too many choices as human beings, and and choices actually have a negative impact on on human beings, and how we kind of just need to like pick someone and work on it, which I mean, uh, I was a little bleak, but I also get the one he I get said it. it. I was like, Oh gosh, um, that's just, I, I'll just pick me, I think. But, um, I, I understand what he said. Cause I think that's like part of the reason people complain, especially in, in LA and New York about dating is because we have too many choices here. Absolutely. Had I stayed in New Jersey, I probably would be married right now. Absolutely. Mm. And I think I was also, you know, it's a profile mm-hmm. and I'm like, was looking, I'd be totally like, how, like we looking at your own profile. Like, how do you, th- how do I think guys see me? Mm, they must think I'm this and this and this. Well, more like what, okay. What school did the guy go to? Do I think mm. he's employed? Like my standards. Do I think he's employed? I, I love dating in says. 2023. Yeah, it was like my standards were so low. Yeah. And I was expecting so little from people um, that I was just like, okay, this is not working. It's not a good f- it's a foundation to start on. I need a matchmaker. And I found this woman in LA. Sophie loved the matchmaker. And she... So... He, Oh my God. What's her like? What's her? Does she have a, like a niche? A tagline? Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> Sophie, go and get it. <laughs> you will get fucked tonight, girl. But in a good way. I think we Not need financially. To, we need to tell her that and that can be her tagline. <laughs> yeah. Because she doesn't have one, but her approach is like, 
why don't you meet these people for real and not banter with them and not like have a completely superficial uh, conversation? Why not just be real from your first date? I would love that, but people get scared when you start out with the real shit. I've I've terrified people before. But like now what I realize is like, cool, bye. Then you're not for me because actually I'm at a level now where I would really want to talk about real stuff. And I, I had this happen very recently where a guy hadn't texted me back. He had texted me every single day for like a week and then I didn't hear from him for two days. And I was like, oh my God, why isn't he texting me? I don't deserve love, I knew it. I knew it, I knew this was (laughs) ruined. And like former me would have just continued in that doom spiral. Sure. Me now with Sophie being like, why don't you just say how you feel? I was like, hey. Uh, like, wait, I can do that? That's you know, legal? I, is, that's legal? Yeah, I won't I'm be allowed. kicked out of the state for this yeah. or kicked out of dating? And I said, hey, you know, I, I'm just noticing there's a change in how we're talking and it's totally cool if you're not interested. I just would want to know. And he was like, no, 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 no. I'm so sorry. It was a work thing. Immediately called me, mm-hmm. said- Hi wow, that must have been hard to write that text message. That's Whoa. so cool. How often would you like to be texted? Whoa. Mind Weird. blown. I was like, oh, a guy who's like communicating with me, but had I not- and doesn't label your communication as nagging. Yeah, exactly. Or like, I'm yeah. so needy or I'm what a bitch. Like yeah. all those things. And then I realized, oh my God, there are guys out there that are of quality. And I would have never known that. I might have even preemptively broken up with him (sighs) had I not just said how I felt. Oh, you're going to hurt me? I'll hurt you first. See you never. I'm out of here. (laughs) But also I think sometimes, like, especially I think women, we do this is like, you know, especially if they start the pattern of texting us, we don't realize that we could also just text text them too. I know. Isn't that crazy? Oh, I could have texted guys. Be like, you never text me. And I go, yeah, no, no, I know. And I don't intend to. I don't intend to. (laughs) That's your job. I'm not doing it. But I let them know that, you know, and they go, it goes, it makes me feel bad when you don't text me. I go, ugh, me existing in the world makes me feel bad. So (laughs) we're going to have to split the difference. (laughs) Um, What, how, so how many dates does this, like, how does this match make it work? You say what you want and then she hooks you up with like a certain amount of dates a week. Yeah. So she, she has like a set number of dates she's going to do. She always does more, but basically, so she Zoom interviews you, but here's the amazing thing. She Zoom interviews or in person interviews every single person you're going to match with. Good, that's good. So she has done the weeding. Yeah. There is one that's step the of most like, exhausting part. oh, this person isn't going to be a crazy nightmare. Right. Because um, that can make you give up on humanity real oh, quick. Which Dating I is so exhausting. And yeah. how much, like how much paperwork or or how much talking did you do to, uh, like about like things that, you know, when you see a matchmaker on TV, they're literally like height, eye color. Yeah, like no. what kinds of things did she ask you about what you want in a partner? And do, like, were there like a list of deal breakers or? Yeah, it was most Mostly, I was like, I want to be, I want to be somebody who I can grow with, who's done a lot of work on their self, mm-hmm. themselves, who is emotionally intelligent, available, can communicate. It was like completely different from what college did they go to? How much money did right. they make? It was all, it was like a wildly different approach because her approach is, it's this thing that she calls authentic relating where it's like- Authentic. I love yeah, that. like you actually talk about stuff. Basically yeah. that, that's what oh, it yeah. is. Because I was like, mine is like share bond. so specific at this point. It's just like zaddy with tattoos mm. who rescues dogs. Ooh. <laughs> but yes. also th- thinks I'm hilarious or, you yeah. know, they don't- I, I I think I'm, I'm think I'm done people who themselves are hilarious. I just, mm. I'm just going to be the funny one I've decided. Right. Yeah. I also realized with funny, funny used to be one of my number one things is like, he has to be funny. And then. And I, not anymore. Not <gasps> anymore. Oh my God. I'd rather I, him be authentic. No, not that either. Oh. That we big can dick? laugh. Oh. Actually, it's big dick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's been added Orphan. to the list. Yeah, exactly. Um, but that just. We laugh at activities. We do things that are fun. Oh, oh, right. oh okay. Right. But like he doesn't have to be the funniest person who's ever lived. Having right. a fun boyfriend is very nice. Fun boyfriend. Fun. I gotta say. Yeah, fun yeah. boyfriend. I have a fun boyfriend for the first time ever. I'm like, wow, Ooh. this is the way to go. A yeah. fun boyfriend so much more than like listening to the Decemberists like so sad. <laughs> I right. always hated that. <laughs> that, that was my, that was my yeah. usual bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A sad sack of crap. <laughs> sad is no fun. We could be yeah. sad together sad. and go wah, wah, wah. Yeah. But then you're like, wait, I'd rather like prank people together or like getting a fake fight at a Walmart. Yeah. And if it doesn't work with him, with this person I'm currently seeing, I'm like, whoa, but now I remember how I was supposed to be treated. Mm-hmm. Right. Which was as a real legitimate human yeah. who someone was nice to. 
which is so sad that that has gotten so far yeah, away get, from it me. It does. It escapes you, man. It escapes you. And you and you develop this thing like with the self healing thing and like working on yourself. Like the 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 best part of it is realizing, oh, okay, I've worked really hard. I fought for this very solid foundation that I've created yes. for myself to the point where. And the personal responsibility is such a huge element of that foundation. Whatever anybody throws at me, this is not, it's not, that's not the last swindler I'm going to meet. No. You know, that's not the last piece of crap that's going to try to fucking, you know, uh, you know, take advantage of me for X, Y, Z or whatever, you know, um, you know how to handle it. Exactly. So it's like, okay, well come at me life and whatever people bring their shit towards me, if I can't see it right away. Okay. And if it reveals themselves to be like, you're a piece of trash, which is going to happen until the day you die, you go, oh, okay, see ya. And, and it, you're like, oh, it's right. not me. I I can get out of this situation. Okay, bye. See you never. And it doesn't wow. devastate you. Yeah. Like, I'm just no longer devastated. Because your self-worth isn't, isn't, isn't wound tied. up in that. Exactly. Yeah. And I recognize, yeah, people are also so weird. Like, the so way these, this great Gatsby was treating me had literally nothing to do with me. It is so sad for him. Yeah. And yeah. now I'm great. Yeah. You know? And so I really feel like all this work, you, you don't do it so that you're perfect and now everything's amazing. You do it so that when the shitty situation comes up again, right. as it will, you're more resilient. You can bounce back quicker. You don't go to such a dark, especially with stuff like suicidal ideation. I don't want to go to like grim darkness mm -hmm. yeah. every time something Every goes time wrong. a guy is an asshole, you're yeah. like, I guess I'll kill myself. It, which no, ain't happen. nobody want to be in that. Exactly. Yeah. And it's like, you got to you gotta take yourself out of that. Yeah. Well, I think that's uh, the that biggest role. problem. And that's like one of the hardest things to get out of is like having your entire like demeanor and mood change depending on how a significant other or a mm. partner uh, or someone you're interested in is treating you totally. because Ugh, yeah. even I'm guilty of that and like uh uh, it's like how do you how do you get around that you know yeah, absolutely and I hope that like the stuff we're all doing is like building enough self worth like yeah. building enough internal safety that this kind of stuff just doesn't rock the boat as much like it definitely still does right. for me but so much less yeah, yeah. than it Which ever has before huge. huge and I know that as I'm on this path that it, it can only get better in that way because I I look at the data points yeah. like. 25 to now is a completely different state of mind. And I'm excited yeah. for how I might grow, you know, more and who I might grow into. Yeah, that's great. Congratulations on working on yourself. That's awesome. Thank you. Congratulations <laughs> on working on yourself. It sounds <laughs> like you, you too have been a lot of crying. on the journey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We have been. Um, did you have any more questions you no. want to ask? Um, so where can people get the book? Is it out now? Is it this yes. episode is going to be coming out on Luminary this Friday and then Excellent. wide release the following Friday? So yes, this book is out now. You Yay. can get it anywhere. Books are sold. Amazon, your local indie, um, anywhere. Okay, great. And then um, what's your social media if you want to promote that? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm Tara Schuster on the gram. Sweet. And I have a newsletter where people can really talk to me, um, which you can get by texting 66866. Oh, texting the word glow to okay. 66866 or just off my website. But um, I love the newsletter. And I hope people will join me there. Yeah, get oh. this book, everybody. Buy it. I recommend from a local bookstore, but I know yeah. Amazon sometimes. You got to do it. You got to yeah. do it. Sometimes just you got to suck that man's it dick. helps Tara. So that's, yeah. Thank you. that's awesome. Uh, this has been Guys We Fucked, the anti-slut shaming podcast. We'll talk to you next Friday. Guys, we hugged... <laughs>